Hey guys, welcome to another episode of In the Game. I'm Robert Guerrero. I'm Mason Pratt. You know, something seems different this week about the set. I don't know. Yeah, something feels nice and, and, and different. Nice and professional. We want to thank the folks over at KHOU for donating one of their news desks. Yeah, we also don't have a rack of, of, of cloth behind us. Now we have this nice red wall. It makes we sense. are moving up in the world. But uh, plenty of news and highlights to get to this week. Uh, Priscilla will be out for our Fan Zone segment as well as out during our Cougar Corner segment with senior wide receiver Tyron Carrier. But until then, we have plenty of news to give you, so let's get started. Soccer's had a rough go recently, going 0-4 on their recent road trip, dropping them to 4-10 overall and just 1-4 in Conference USA play. David Smith and Megan Munoz were named the CUSA Cross Country Athletes of the Week. And in volleyball news, freshman setter Caitlin Ogletree was named CUSA Setter of the Week, helping the volleyball team go 2-2 two and two on their road trip, dropping their first two to SMU in Tulsa, but finishing it off with back-to-back -back wins over East Carolina. After that excellent defensive performance against ECU, Phillips Stewart was named the CUSA Defensive Player of the Week with his two picks. And after passing for 304 yards in the 56-3 win over East Carolina, Case Keenan moved into sole possession of second place in career passing yards. He is now less than 1,200 yards away from the all-time record. Golf tied for first in the Fighting Irish Great Iron Classic, and James Ross was named CUSA Golfer of the Week after his performance in that same event. And that's it for all the news. Let's throw it out to some highlights. The Cougars advance to 6-0 as they beat East Carolina 56-3 in front of another sellout crowd at Robertson Stadium. Quarterback Case Keenum threw for 304 yards with three touchdowns. The running back core stepped up big. Charles Sims led the attack with 84 yards and two touchdowns. And Michael Hayes and Bryce Bell combined for 107 yards and two up more touchdowns. The defense stepped up big as they racked up nine sacks and four interceptions. Junior linebacker Phillip Stewart registered his first two picks of the season, and freshman linebacker Derek Matthews and sophomore defensive back Thomas Bates also had a pick in the game. Patrick Edwards was Keenum's top target of the nine, hauling in a career-high 12 receptions for 133 yards and two touchdowns. The Cougars will now step up to play against Marshall in the homecoming game. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Robert and I will recap the pounding of East Carolina as well as preview the homecoming matchup against Marshall. So stay right there. Let's get started with a little commentary. Um, Mason, UH just came out of that pounding of ECU. Yeah, no doubt uh, the most impressive win so far. And this is <laughs> this is a game going in that I was kind of worried about. ECU is a top-notch team. They had come in with three losses, but all to BCS conference teams at South Carolina, Virginia Tech, and North Carolina. They turned the ball over a lot in those games. That's why they lost. But initially, I was really worried about this game. But this is one of the few times probably in the last couple of years, that the defense outperformed the offense. Yeah, it was nice to see the defense step up. Uh, Philip Stewart had those two big interceptions. And that team is expected to be a high-powered offense, just like us. They run the same system. And it was, it was supposed to be a shootout, and, and UH it, stepped up. It was, it was definitely not. But you know some of the numbers defensively holding them to 21 yards rushing, which is great to see after giving up almost 200 yards on the ground going into that game. So they just completely shut down the run. Hopefully they can keep that going against Marshall and then, uh, and then to Rice on. But then nine sacks, another th thing that they had gotten, they were in trouble doing, getting to the quarterback all year. Four picks, like you mentioned, too, to Matthews. It was, uh, or Stewart, my, excuse me. So it was just a great all-around game. Yeah, they did, a, defense did everything they haven't been doing. They got to the quarterback. They, they forced uh, turnovers and, and they stopped the run. And, and that was refreshing to see, like you said. And it's, it, it will be interesting to see if they can keep it up through the season. They're going to need it coming up, not particularly against uh, Marshall, but against Rice, which has a very good running game. Yeah, well, and then just the offense, business as usual, quick strike, touchdowns, just 
another day at the office for, for, for Case Keenum, over 300 yards. Just, you know, just a typical day in the U of H offense. Yeah, it's what Case does. He just keeps inching towards those, those all-time NCAA records. He should own them all at the end of the season, you know, barring any kind of freak injury like last year. Yeah, and, and it's, it's very possible he, he sets all, uh, maybe not the, the all-time passing, but the, the touchdowns and, and uh, the all, in the all-time offense, that very possible he, he gets those in this home stretch still with the, with the game upcoming against Marshall as well as Rice. So it's very possible uh, you could treat the home fans to some very memorable, memorable stuff. Yeah, and coming up is the, uh, the homecoming game. And they're going to be wearing the throwback uniforms. It'll be nice to see going back to that that Bill Yeoman era <laughs> yeah. of, of football. Yeah, throwback style. But yeah, previewing that Marshall game, you know, there's a lot of weird stats you can throw out there. Marshall has never won in the state of Texas, 0 for 7 all time. But you know, going into this game, I think the two priorities: one on offense, one on defense. You got to stop Vinnie Curry, who leads the nation in tackles for loss. He's just been living in opponents' backfields. Just ask Rice. He just complete Conference USA Player of the Week because of that game against Rice. And then the new quarterback got his first start at Rice last week. And you know they they didn't have any rushing touchdowns going into that game. He gets two. He's definitely one of those guys. He's gonna not he's not gonna beat you with his arm, but you know just a hundred yards passing and a pick, but on the ground, over 100 yards, two touchdowns. So I think if they can stop both of those guys, great chance of winning. It, it's dangerous for the UH defense. They, they finally got a game where they stopped the run, but now there's two off, offensive threats running the ball with a with the new quarterback in, in place, and he, he can run the ball, and that's what he did. Like you said, he got the first two rushing touchdowns for, for ECU of, of the season five games in. Which <laughs> yeah, which is, is almost insane. unheard of. I don't yeah. even know how that's possible, but – Statistically speaking, this is a game that they, they should take care of business because Marshall, one of the worst offensive teams in the country, no doubt the worst in the conference. They just, uh, like we said, just cannot run the ball, uh, just just struggling all year. And that's probably why they made that switch to A.J. Graham. Yeah, Marshall <coughs> needs needs to come in, and Vinnie Curry is a defensive beast. He's a, yeah, he's, he's, a he's, a, he's an NFL player for sure. Oh, no doubt. And he'll be playing in the NFL next year. And it'll be interesting to see if our line can stop it. Also, our running backs are pretty good blocking running backs. That's something that, that isn't said very much. Those, all three of them are very good at protecting Case and yeah, giving them that they, extra That's two, something, three you know, for as much as they run the ball well as well as they receive the ball, they don't get credit in that field that definitely can block. But um, with this offense, you know, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of weapons for Marshall. So I think if you can keep Vinnie Curry off of Case Keenum, which – They've done pretty well all year, just giving up eight sacks all year. So one of those is going to have to give, you think? Yeah, I think Case is just an excellent quarterback when it comes to sacks. He, got, he has excellent pocket presence. He can feel the rush coming, and he can move out of the pocket. He can make stuff happen. You saw it in uh, versus uh, La Tech where he just ran around and then just heaved it up, and, and yeah. things happen when he and, it. and it's not even about you know scrambling like, like an A.J. Graham can. It's just making those subtle movements, getting away from what would be sacks. And, yeah, like you mentioned in that Louisiana Tech game, there's, uh, that's one of the reasons they got back into it, just subtle movements in the pocket, throwing the ball down the field. But um, I think you know going into this game, as well as if they play their brand of football, there's, it should be a blowout, no problem. Yeah, it should be no problem for U of H. All right, well, that will do it. Let's send it out now to Priscilla Riojas in our Fan Zone segment. <laughs> 